We'll we'll just wait for a video to kick in and Hey, how how are you doing? Looks like it's morning on your side of the world. Oh, uh, yeah, no. I mean, it's middle of the day. Uh, we're quarter to 5 here. Oh, that's cool. So, so yeah, uh, afternoon I guess is the correct term. Hey, that's nice. So maybe you could um we'll start um tell us a little bit about yourself. Um okay. My name is Jonas Erb. Mm -hmm. I am from Norway, um, and I've been playing Magic since Onslaught Rock Block, Ooh. so for 20 years this year, so mm -hmm. quite the anniversary. Oh, that's, that's, that's neat. So, um, how, so um, how, have you been playing Historic Artisan or mostly just Arena in general? Well, um, I've been like playing a lot of different <laughs> formats over the years but like i i remember very well that that uh, like when we had the decleton oh um, wow, yes. i yeah back in december um historic artisan was like the first time in a long time i enjoyed playing constructed in arena uh i like my eternal format and i do love drafting i mainly draft on the arena these days hmm. that's how i earn my mythic qualifiers oh wow you make it to mythic in limited nice uh yeah usually do every month okay. many congratulations there so Thanks. um so you so basically decathlon was your first experience with historic artisan yes um like i played offer on magic online on and off it's, I've been on a break, but like I did enjoy like how it slows down the format to and not have access to rares and mythic. It actually makes more small decisions matter. I feel um, in standards, you you often feel like you just resolve like something like a planeswalker, and suddenly. The, game just snowballs in your um, advantage say you resolve a gold span dragon you attack with it you get the treasure you use that treasure to hold up a counter spell and you just keep accumulating advantage but you don't have cards like that in formats like artisan or pauper that snowballs advantage to such a degree that's what i really enjoy about the format oh wow that that's actually a very very good insight about the format i i see mm -hmm. yeah so um c tell us a little bit about the deck that you that brought you to victory oh uh, yeah i played a rakdos like um on the cult out altar uh, i'd say it was largely based on like the idea that uh What's the name of the card? Uh, Deadly Dispute. Oh wow, yes. Was probably the best common in in arena in general. Mm -hmm. uh, Only called Alter was just an amazing uh, synergy there. Experimental Synthesizer is another amazing card, often being a draw two for red at one mana, and it also allowed you to gain additional advantage with both the aforementioned card. So I was like, okay, uh, this looks like good synergies. Um, this seemed to work very well in Pauper as well, where you have the Rakdos deck. Recently in Pauper, Atog was banned. Uh, in, uh, in Arena, we have the Gremlin, that is a, an identical copy to the Atog, except it's an uncommon, the Ravenous Intruder. Oh, yes. It has the exact same text, exact same stats. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, this is a good start. And as an uh, upgrade to Fling, we have the modal, uh, land, uh, modal land spell mm -hmm. that uh, is Fling with, for one extra mana. Yeah, Kazoo's um, Fury, yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had games where I would just like my opponent uh, was keeping their defenses up. I wasn't actually connecting with much of damage, 
and then I would just be a 5 mana in one turn, I'd slam the intruder, I'd sacrifice 10 artifacts, and I'd fling it for my, in my opponent's face for 21 from... yeah. So I had games like I took my opponent down from 16 to 0 or 20 to 0 in one turn, and... Actually, one of my favorite moments was probably when I was against the mill deck. And, like, I was just like, my deck was... I had one card in my deck. And I was just, like, looking through my graveyard, because, like, I could know exactly what was left. And I noticed it was the, like, the fling. Uh, and I was like, okay, I got my dog. I got enough artifacts. And I literally um, took my opponent from 17 to 0 in one turn with 0 cards in my deck. That's oh, wow. probably my favorite combat win from this oh. tournament. Oh wow, so yeah, so you, it looks like you had a lot of fun in this tournament. Oh yeah, no, I very much enjoy this deck, I very much enjoy this format. Um, I played a very few lands, so I found myself Mulling uh, to 6 and 5 to find a land, and yeah, I had some games that were stuck on one land, couldn't uh, find a second. <laughs> but that's, that's part of it. it once I got this deck got past the early game, though, it just was a lot of cantrips, a lot of gas, a lot of value. So, um, yeah, so, um, in hindsight, um, even though you even though you've proven the deck is very successful, was there anything that you would have changed about the deck now, now that you know? Like, uh, I found myself like playing like one Voldaren Epicure mm -hmm. and one Shambling Gas and the, like maybe with further testing, I would have cut one of them for an additional land or go for the two of the ga gas but both are kind of a remnant of a pre previous versions of the deck in testing um, like first time around I didn't like run any mayhem devils and mm. I was like okay um, I just wanted to see with how low a curve I could run this deck, but like, I realized there was going to be a ton of creature decks, and I was probably going to face the mirror matches, having access to the two Mayhem Devils I ended up playing, I felt was correct, and I had to play an extra land to make that work. So, Kasul's Fury was like the modal fling land card I was talking about, mm -hmm. And I felt I was back and forward on zero to two of those, and I just decided I, playing that as the land number seventeen and eighteen, and playing two devils and one Sahili was how much I wanted to stretch the mana base with three drops. Then I wanted to make it so I could as safely as possible play experimental synthesizers. And that's why I was a bit like um, skeptical to adding any three drops. Hmm, I see. But um, that is a that's actually a very nice philosophy in deck building as well. You have you have a plan, you have a vision, you execute it as close as possible, and it paid out for you. That's actually a very good one. Mm -hmm. I I actually think like. Uh, Playtesting with Kidium was actually the one thing that actually made me think of adding that Sahili. Because like I saw, he had a, also a take on the Rakdos uh, Treasure Oni Cult. His was a more combo-y, controlly than mine, but which I like, I thought was like, very cool. I just uh, taught his drag, drag spark reactor, although amazing when you do it, it was a little slow to get mm -hmm. going. So I tend to gear away from those, but I like the Sahili, like a singleton Sahili mm -hmm. seemed really good in my mind as well. And like doing some cool stuff like 
making one of your tokens into Omicult Anvil, and then like making it self-destruct with its own ability, triggering itself and your other Anvil, draining and getting two tokens back was pretty good. Whereas the deck could just go through many cards in one game, like Synthesizer into Deadly Dispute, uh, then you have amazingly draw three for two mana and like you're, you're starting to make comparisons to ancestral recall <laughs> wow. oh yeah you mentioned kidium shout out to him he's actually watching right now yeah no that's why i gave him the shout out hey yeah now now um maybe not not necessarily to shoot yourself um if ever we have another historic artisan for, um event but is there any card that you think you, you would think of banning if we ever do this again? Banning? Uh, that's an interesting question. I feel the format is like... I don't think it's figured out. Like, I did have like one loss where I felt my deck was just in a bad matchup. That was the versus blue-white auras. Um, mm. Sticking a bunch of auras on an Adapt of Vanguard, giving it flying and lifelink is it's impossible to race for any deck like mine and like I do feel that like the deck um, or the archetype that I presented in the tournament will definitely would be like one of the meta decks of a for, uh, format if it was established but whether it would be the absolute best i don't i don't think necessarily that i feel like blue white Horus is going to prey on that if it became the deck to play and then there would likely be some control deck with the correct answers to say cards like a dental vanguard because it can still be edicted and it can still be shrunk below the zero toughness and killed that way and there's also enchantment removal of course Hmm. So you're foreseeing a sort of rock paper scissors format eventually. Yeah, uh, I would start by saying that shrines doesn't seem necessarily. I think they're fair to unban. I, I'd rather see the format open up and like shrine getting its position as well because playtesting against shrines with this deck actually turned out very successful. The shrines. They just couldn't keep up with all the value. I was drawing more cards, putting more pressure, and dealing with them consistently. So I don't think banning shrines was necessary. Necessary, but only um, argued that it was a good ban for the sake of diversity, because he reckoned that everybody would just make it the default deck to play and you would see a lot less bruise you would see a lot less diverse meta than that. that's that's a ban reason to ban them i can get behind but playing the first tournament maybe, maybe i showcased a lot more strategies to be viable we've seen i've seen l mill uh auras flicker a different, uh, different takes on uh, my deck, and so on. There's the jump variants, the reactor variant, Kidion played. All in all, it seems like a meta. Uh, I can get behind. I would, if I was going to ban one card from my deck, I think it would be Deadly Dispute. <laughs> oh. I understand. Yeah, that. Yeah, that that would make, yeah, as you said, best on one of the best on comments. Straight from common, Oh, one common. of the best comments. Sorry, my bad. So, mm -hmm. actually, um, one more thing. Um, do you do you do any streaming or um any anything you want to plug? Um, or I promote. Wish, <laughs> I wish, but my com computer is uh hot garbage um oh. i can uh, manage to play arena as long as i keep up with the most recent windows updates oh wow 
Well, you, you, you and me both. I'm actually going to replace half my computer as soon as I move house. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I hope to actually see you again in the next Historic Artisan for Tournament if we have one. It's actually a pl nice pleasure okay. talking to you. Also, shout out to yeah, yeah. Alan, um, um, our second place finisher, your your opponent. He just um, he just joined us right now. Alpha dude. <coughs> yes, yes. Right yeah. So, um, first time you guys hearing each other. Uh, uh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, there, yeah. But there we there, there we go. So um, not not now it's um our turn to um interview um a a Alan. So um. Um. Thank you. Th um. Thank you so much. Um. Jo um. Joni. Um. If you want to stay, it's okay. Um. If if you, if you if you want to go go ahead, it's okay also. Yeah, I'll stay around. Oh, sure. No problem. So, um, tell us a little bit more about yourself, Alan. Well, uh. Hmm. Uh. Sorry, Sorry, never heard before. That <laughs> kind of it, to me. <laughs> no, it's it's it. No, it's, I know, I know. It's it's it's. I I understand. Um, it, usually I just start with um, tell what, or um, if not about yourself, um, how, how did you get 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 started with magic? Oh, okay, that's a, that's a better question. <laughs> hey. <answer> that one. <laughs> um, it's actually kind of a funny story, actually. Um. Where's my coffee cup? Here it is. Sorry. <laughs> Morning over there, right? Coffee. <laughs> yeah. It's well, it's it's, it's ten a.m. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so I was in college, uh, and to me, magic, magic people were you know nerds, and <laughs> there's no way I was gonna play that game. At least that's, a, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, my friend of mine, I was in the, was in the, the lunch area, and a buddy of mine was playing with some of his friends, and I sat down, because, uh, you know, that, that was the only friend that I saw in the cafeteria, so I sat at the table with them, and was eating my food. I drank it done eating. Uh, my, he turns to me and slaps a deck down in front of me. <laughs> and I'm just, and, uh, I'm like, I don't want to play this stupid game. Like, <laughs> what are you handing me this for? I don't want to play this. And, uh, he goes, no, if you're sitting here, you're playing. I'm like, but I don't know how to play this game. Nor do I really want to. He goes, dude, you're playing. Like, Okay. <laughs> and here I am. Over 15 years later. Is it 15 years later? No, not 15 years. Uh, my math is bad. It's it fine. It's, 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 it's probably closer to like 10 years, but yeah. Well, so I guess we should um, say um big shout out to your friend. Um, many thanks for introducing you to, to the game. Yeah, it was actually it was actually uh, a, a lot of fun. First deck I ever played was a, it was a mono red goblin deck. Oh wow! Yeah, it was a it was a it was a pretty fun deck. Um, became sort of a a favorite of mine ever since then. <clears throat> I see. So, well, um, how so? Um, how about historic artists and um, how would you describe your first experience with it? Uh, well, of course, like, for, for Artisan, I think, um, I played in, in, in a, a couple of, you know, uh, paper events uh, mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, uh, nothing really major. And then, uh, uh, Commander became kind of the, the thing for me for a while. Uh, I did, I did a bit of, you know, um, Uh, other types of formats, you know, standard, mm -hmm. modern. When modern modern started, I was you know was pretty big, in, pretty was pretty big in that for a while, um, and then you know arena came around, and then that's when got into it a bit more. Cause it started having the artisan events. 
Oh, wow. um, my, 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 my favorite deck uh, when I first started doing um, the more recent um, artisan stuff was uh, White and Black Life Game. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a, a, a pet favorite of mine. Um, and then I started dabbling into other decks and then um, I remembered a standard event that I did back in the day it was a blink deck and so I started dabbling into uh, the to that sort of deck and uh, created uh, the one I played during this event Hmm. I see. Hmm, I see. That's actually that's actually a very interesting story on how you got to Soul Herder. And um, oh yeah, I should say also congratulations. Um, you really trounced me very good. I, I was um, I was Alan's opponent before he got to you, Joni. Ah, I see. Okay. So yeah. what was that matchup like? Um, I was playing from behind the whole time. Um. I played a uh, white blue version of uh, Alan's deck, and suffice to say, um, Alan dared to um, push the mana base. He dared to put in the more powerful stuff, the more interactive stuff. I could not keep up. Yeah, no, I can imagine like uh, Ramna Chupacabra sticking around, blowing up soul herders every turn. Oh, wow. Would make the matchup pretty favorable for him. Yeah, that's why I, indeed I was very impressed. I was ac I was actually kind of rooting for him, but in the end I'd say that I would I would be happy whoever among the two of you w would win. You, it is well, it, it's well deserved. Thank you. Um, Thank you for hearing us yeah. on. That that said, um what, what what was the what were the matchups you, um how would you describe your experience with the tournament, Alan? What were the stuff you enjoyed about it? Any oh, more Probably the, just the diversity. It, it actually was funny because uh, I think in my pod uh, there was only one other point deck, and uh, he was running more of a stock list. Uh, mine was quite different <laughs> than than other blink decks, probably, because um, I put it way more interaction. Mm -hmm. than usually people do um, for the kind of kind of list I was running uh, because cards are just insanely powerful nowadays and uh, you can it's actually pretty amazing how powerful some of the some of the uh, some of the cards are for just at the uncommon level I mean <laughs> limited is almost abysmal <laughs> <laughs> which is what which is my favorite format to play but uh, uh, but yeah just the they're just cards that you just you have to deal with and you have to have interaction um, you can't run on sorcery speed uh, you have to be able to protect your stuff you have to be able to um, to you know counter something if possible or destroy something um, there are just things you just can't let stick around. So, um, uh, but yeah, so that's probably my, be my favorite thing, though, is just the, how much diversity there was in the format. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, probably the worst matchup was. Uh, I only lost once in the pot, and I think that was to. I don't remember his name, but uh, he was playing a. He was playing a rogue deck, the the, the rogue mill deck, black the demi rogues. Mm -hmm. uh, that was probably my worst matchup. Uh, that was that was definitely a hard one. I was very underprepared for it. <laughs> <laughs> did not have much of a sideboard for it um, I don't know how I forgot that that deck existed <laughs> so uh, he just he just steamrolled me um, I, oh, I, did, oh, I think I beat him game two when I actually drew my interaction 
mm, with a few spells that it had. Yeah. Uh, but just them being able to play on instant speed constantly is just really hard to deal with. Mm. Oh wow. Well, I'll also pose the same question. You did say that um you felt it was very diverse, but is there anything that you would probably ban, or I should open it up? Anything you would unban from historic artists, and if we go have another go around at it? Man, I don't know to be honest. Um, uh, I really think the shrine deck needs to stay banned. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just it's just so abysmal to play against um it, it's like uh, whenever whenever a historic artist event comes around i think shrines is like most of what i see same thing everybody their mother grandmother and great 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 grandmother is playing shrines it seems like and it just I, I, I don't think it's it's good for the I don't really think it's good for the format. Um, other than shrines, um, I I can't really think of anything else that that is just bad enough that yeah I I think I think that's the only deck that I that I really see that's you know that bad. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think I think that's the only deck to be honest. That's um, fair. I think most other ones, I think most other ones are are pretty fair, um, you know, in, in considering how powerful uh, the comments are comments are nowadays. Okay, so, oh yeah, one one more thing. Um, you did, um, although you may not be on camera now. Um, do you do any streaming, or is there anything you want to plug? Um, I dabble here and there. Um, I actually am going to be starting a, a, a YouTube channel um, because I do limited so much. I figured that I may as well make videos <laughs> when I do it. Sweet. So, um, uh, I it's it's actually funny because I feel like I have the worst luck sometimes, which is odd because I did fairly well in this event mm -hmm. um, uh, so maybe it is just my drafting maybe I'm just that bad <laughs> but um, uh, but yeah uh, I, I, I do um, I do have a YouTube channel of uh, Treasure Games I believe there is a story behind that that name most people uh, most people on the internet know me as, as Trailer Trasher that's a whole other uh, it's a whole other story. <laughs> mm. But yeah, sure. Um, yeah, indeed. Um, so shout out to tra um, tra Trailer Trasher. D don't worry about the. Uh, don't worry about um, limited looking bad. One thing I learned is if they, the next thing that people want to watch aside from you being successful is you suffering. Schadenfreude is a thing. Yeah. So you'll be successful either way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I didn't mean to say that, that that limited is bad. That's not that's not necessarily true. Yeah, okay. It's just that the, the sets recently have been overhyped in kind of power. Now, thankfully, it's come down a lot since um, since the last set, which was awful because the rares were just so so good. Oh, Crimson if you Vow. Open, if, you, if you didn't open, like, a good rare, then you're probably not winning. <laughs> uh, that's kind of where it came down to. But uh, this set, thankfully, is, is a lot better. Um, I just, I just, I think part of my gripe is I miss pod drafting. Um, it just doesn't really happen anymore unless you go to your local game store, but... Since we're just com coming out of a pandemic, uh, store just now starting, out starting out. to open up. Uh, you know, and you can't pod draft on Arena. So, and then, you know, even Magic Online, no one does it. So, I just think, like, the, 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 the lack of 
being able to pod draft. It's that, that was always the best because I think you get a better feel for uh, uh, because if everyone's drafting out of the same pool and you play against somebody else who's also drafting out of a different pool, uh, there's a, you know, I, I, I feel like the matchups are, be- are better um, drafting within your own pod than drafting against someone else in a whole different pod. But that's, that's just my, that's just my opinion, I guess. <laughs> No, I I, I, under, but, I I understand where you're coming from. I, I I also I also was there when they still had the pods in online, and then they transitioned to league. Although I kind of stopped drafting by then, but yeah, I understand the pros and cons on either side. But there is some something in me that does miss it too. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I just I just feel like the the, the overhype on power and um, it's it's not about really like reading signals anymore mm. um, it's it, you know uh, and then you have 17 lands which I'm not a fan of um, I feel like it just it skews drafts so badly because people just you know misread the data but <laughs> I don't want to get too much into that it's it 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 it's okay, but um yeah, th- those are actually wo- wonderful insights. But um there we go. Um um, congr- ladies and gentlemen, um, our our first and second place finishers, uh, of Onyx um his historic artisan tournament. It, indeed, it's actually a wonderful. Um, I in, I thought this interview was just gonna be question answer question answer, but you guys gave such wonderful insights. I, it's actually a pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure talking to you as well, sir. <laughs>